now uh, that that PowerPoint presentation is up there is it it is yeah it is yeah okay I'll just let I think we've most people in so I'll just get started so all we're going to do this evening is just to a, a recap I'll just give another one or two minutes to let people in. Uh, let's see now, we'll just won't let it be. Can we do that? Okay, fine. Right, and that's fine. Ground now, I think we have most people in. Um, so as I said, we're just going to look at revision this evening. So I'm going to cover past papers, the topics that are covered. Um, we're going to look at the exam format and the marking scheme. Okay. And we're looking, most importantly, we're going to look at areas for revision. Um, so you'd have gone through this already with um, uh, just the exam format and the structure with Rowan, but I'm going to go over it again. So these are just a repeat of the slides you saw from Rowan. So the um, timetable for that, as you know, is 9.30 on Saturday the 14th. Okay. And hold on. Sorry. There's a few more people in the lobby now until we get them. I think that's Got changed, Joe. Suzanne. Hi, Joe. That time's changed, Susanna. The, did they change it again? Yeah. What, when did they, that's the only after changing it since last Thursday. I saw one's in there. What time um, did they change it for them? Half four. It's just four or half four Saturday, yeah. Saturday evening. Oh, in the Saturday evening. Okay. I didn't, I didn't spot that now. Jesus. Yeah. You must've got another notification. I, I saw the, it was the 16th. Then they changed it to the 14th. So it was to be the Monday. Okay. Grand. Okay. Um, right. I'm just going to double check. You got that from Brian, was it? It's on the... Brian McCann? No, we didn't get any notification. At it... least I'm not, I didn't saw any. Yeah, so, it's so, in the did link. Did you get any notification that's changed? So how did you know it's changed? Sorry. It's in the link when oh, you go Alana's into the timetables. Alana's got it, yeah. Yeah, it's on the link, yeah. Okay, will you will you just? I'm just going to make sure because I only had a look at all the notifications. Just I didn't see it. There's, there's, an, online, there's an online live timetable. Yes. I've updated on that, I think. And when you go into okay. examinity, it's I, in at half four. But yeah. that's not what what Brian McCann sent around to you. Sure, it isn't. This is what I had. Okay, I'm just going to ask him to double check that because, Alana, you only saw that. So yeah. you only found find that out by the by. Yeah, I think there was some notification about the um, timetable's been updated, but I didn't take much notice of that. So when I looked in examinity, it came up at half four. And when I looked on the yeah. timetable link, it came up at half... And I re-looked at it and it said it was at half four now. Okay, well, you just... I, I'm just going to email Brian McCann just to make sure... And then to just double confirm back to you what time that is, because that's really okay. That's that's right, Grant. Okay, so we'll. I'll just make a note that I'm going to just check on that. I'm going to turn yeah. you up here, see if I can turn up the volume. A bit, it's cause you're very. It's in um, it's in examinity and on. Yes. That they're both in at half four. Yeah. Okay, but that's not the. That's not what you officially. That's not officially what you were told. Not originally. You just, you just, yeah, you just saw that updated automatically. Yeah. Because you went into it, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, okay. I, I'm just going to double check that with Brian McCann, just to make sure. Okay. So we'll ignore that bit. Um, so three-hour exam. Um, and you can send it Sligo, Athlone, or with an online proctor. But I believe the date for the online proctor is closed now. Um. So is anybody is anybody having problems with that or if you wanted an online proctor you you got sorted? Yeah. To be honest, I haven't had a chance to even think about it yet, so I've missed missed my chance. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, no, it was um 
it, it came and went the deadlines are, are quite fast for them but um i don't know who was talking there but I, like are you're 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 fine for going to sligo anyway was it joe that was talking there it was gordon um gordon, hi. yeah yeah I, I don't know to be honest um i have a, I have a new baby here so that's why um, ah. I'm looking, and there's such a lot of spam email comes into the IT Sligo email address that uh, important yeah, emails is. gets yeah. completely swamped. So yeah. I miss yeah. them. But uh, anyway, I'll, I'll, oh, but uh, where where are you travelling from, Gordon? Is it Dublin? Dublin. No. Yeah. You're coming Dublin to Sligo, and so uh, will that loan help you? That, that loan wouldn't be too bad. I have to check whether I'm still able to choose that option. Okay. Um. Okay. I'm just going to um, in the email that I'm sending to Brian. I'll just query that as well. Is that all right, Gordon? And you can s- you yeah. send an email if you do. It'd be good just directly after this um, session, and I'm I'll going to email him as well, just straight after this. Is that okay? Yeah, thanks. Um, um, and congratulations. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. Um, really, really bad timing on my part. I know. I know. Yeah. Um, it's it's difficult. Um, let me see. Uh, what was I doing? Um, I'm just gonna go back to this. Yeah, get rid of that. Um, yeah. So for those of you, there are certain rules with the proctored exams. Um, so I think there you can they're ha- like so for all of you, it's it's really good. it's going to be handwritten. Um, now that said, and I don't know, but it, some people may may have a problem. With handwriting, like I, I know from a previous student, um, they had arthritis, um, and they had the special reason why, why, why they couldn't actually handwrite it. So that's all covered within IT Sligo. If there's any issues like that, um, and you haven't already, let us know. Will you, will you let us know? If that doesn't, if that's a barrier to, um, just, just let us know, uh, for any format of the exams. <clears throat> Um, we're going to give you an extra, if it's a proctored exam, there'll be an extra 20 minutes then for scanning and uploading. Um, so I think there's there's companies that will do the proctored exam for you, so you need to chat to them. So just make sure you have that teed up and discussed with them so you're not stressed on the day about trying to figure out what format. So usually on the phones, the resolution are so good on the phones, once once you get a good image, a good clear image, that's and convert that to a PDF, then then that's fine. Just make sure that you you are set up to do that. So as I said, that you're not worried and stressed and um, pulling your hair out at the end of uh, an exam, which is stressful already. So just if you try and try and you know uh, line that up and and do a test run or a dry run about what you're doing. So the structure and as I said Rowan will have gone through these with you already. So there's eight questions. There are four in road safety engineering and four in road safety auditing, and you do two. From each section so there's quite a lot of choice in them um so there's uh, there's something in there for for everyone so you know kind of makes it easier for uh, for revision because you don't have to know everything in the course you can kind of um i suppose um tailor it uh, and try and reduce the amount that you actually have to cover um in in great detail um so each question so you answer four in total and each question will have a marking of 25 marks within each of the exam questions the breakdown within each one will be given um for example if there are two parts to it typically they'll be broken up between 12 and a half points 12 and a half points or 10 and 15 after three or more sections there might be 10 marks eight marks etc but you'll be given for each one in the exam paper it'll it'll be there um, so because this is a level nine, the lot of the language around it uh, and the question format will ask you to describe. So we'd be asking for my section, I'd be asking you maybe to describe a theory, describe a term, describe a methodology, and um, then discuss. Um, usually with the questions that I have would be discuss how this would be used for road safety engineering and auditing. Um, typical things like that, compare and cross contrast or advantages and disadvantages. Um, so for example, and I'll, I'll get to that in what, I, what I'm covering, there's some examples of, of that. In your opinion, okay, so based on what you've learned in this course to, I suppose, colour your opinion, what is your opinion about a certain thing? For example, what is your opinion about the current um, road safety trends in Ireland and the future? And you may compare and contrast that with what's going on in Europe more generally. 
Um, and then we might ask you to illustrate with examples. So if you are saying advantages and disadvantages, you may give examples. The examples we're looking for are examples for road safety auditing and engineering. For example, um, if you were applying some methodology to select a treatment or a measure, how would that help or hinder you? Um, and challenges and limitations are other kind of ways we would ask you to discuss something or describe something and um, give your opinion about, about something. Uh, then we'll ask for, in some of the questions, in all of the questions, try to support the points that you're trying to make in your answers with figures, data and examples. So figures are going to be limited enough, I would suggest. Uh, maybe something like the Haddon um, matrix, um, you would put a little sketch or something like that to describe, you know, the rows and things like that, the rows and columns, that figure would be quite helpful as an illustration. Data, if you're describing, discussing, or giving your opinion on something, data is very helpful. So have kind of key bits of data that you're interested in discussing ready. Um, for example, you know, headline figures of where we are in road safety numbers, um, maybe the split between the different road users and the trends that, that we see playing out in Ireland, um, etc. Those kind of things. Um, feedback, uh, Rowan covered this as well. So that's on Moodle. There's a little section there. So if you want to give us your feedback, that'd be really, really helpful. Um, so what I'm going to do now, you've kind of covered that already with Rowan. So I'm going to just move on to the kind of the recap of the 10 lectures and kind of go through five sample questions. So does anybody have any questions on the previous bits that I've just covered? Are you OK? All OK. okay. So if you haven't already found them, the past papers are available on Moodle. Um, from the Moodle page, just uh, for your module uh, in Moodle. Okay, so when you go to the main landing page, there'll be my section, Rowan section, and you'll see uh, a little section here, uh, past exam papers, just click into that. It's the landing page where you see news and discussion, the whole lot, just for the module. And you should have two examples in here available to look at and to download. Um, so they were, notification for that was in, via the news and discussions of, from the 11th. Okay, so just go back and have a look. So if you haven't looked at them already, it'd be a really, really good idea to do that. A, a one really good thing to do is time yourself answering one of the questions. See how long does it take you? So it's a three hour exam and you've got, and you've got four questions to answer. So you'll know how much time kind of you need for like either break it out evenly or you feel you need more time for certain topics rather than over others that maybe you know more clearly. So do sit down and try and actually write one of them to see how long it takes you and factor in some time for reading back what you've just written in case you want to edit it, put in commas or put in bullet points or start again. Um, so you just need to have a little bit of time um, to think about the structure of how it's going to read and to make sure you read back what you've written so that you haven't left out any points, maybe. Because um, I know I see sometimes when, when students are not used to writing for a long time, which is always the case uh, on a course like this, um, that, you know, even simple, you might miss opportunities where um, you'd like to make a final point or to wrap up a point but don't leave yourself enough time to read back what you just wrote and then maybe finish it off or, or slightly change it. And it does make the world the world a difference to give yourself the best chance um, for answering the questions. So I'm just going to go through um, the lectures that we covered. So lecture one, and I've kind of circled the main bits of lecture one, and I've, I'm going to go through each lecture. Um, so not all of the lectures are relevant that you need to cover, and I'm going to go through that here this evening. So lecture one. So overall, lecture one has a good intro and uh, to kind of what's going on in 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 terms of road safety. And um, there's some good headline trends in Ireland and the EU in that lecture. 
there is good information there about road safety data, the strengths and limitations. So that'd be good to have a revision of that. Um, a little bit about road safety information and data, where to find it. You, that was on your kind of reading list already. So don't worry about that too much. Um, and of course, uh, the reading list was there as well. Um, so I'm not telling you to go through all of the reading list, pick off one or two of the things that you were interested in and, and don't go and do a whole pile of reading uh, at this at this point. You know, that's quite a broad reading list. Um, but do take a look at the trends, road safety data strengths and weaknesses um, and some of the data information sources. I, I'd suggest maybe pick two of them um, and, and have a read of those. Um, the road safety, the road safety strategy is in there. Um, the guidelines are there and um, the road safety collision facts from the RSA are in there as well. So minimum look at those. Um, lecture two, we broadly covered this um, in assignment work. So you will have would have covered that um, there's not too much in lecture two that you need to worry about. Um, maybe have a browse over it in case something ca catches your eye. But in the main lecture two, we've, we've kind of examined you on that already um, with your coursework because you'll have brought that into some of the work for Steve and Stuart. And then assignment one for me, the stick diagram, you already would have been assessed on that. So don't worry about lecture two so much. Similarly, lecture three, you will have employed all of that really, except maybe regression to the mean, uh, just to know what that is uh, and how it affects, uh, how it would affect your work if you were doing road safety measures. Um, all of the rest, comparative tests, uh, quantitative tests, everything like that, we've already examined you on that because that's part of your project work. Uh, so don't worry about too much about that. Again, like I said, a little bit on regression to the mean because we haven't, we have that, you haven't really, that, that's, that's an important concept to know about. So don't worry too much about lecture three. That's the stats lecture because we have examined you on that already um, on the, in the continuous assessment. Lecture four, again, you will be examined on this as part of your project work. So don't really worry too much about what's in um, lecture four either. Um, maybe take a little bit of a look at the data bit on that. But that's really, really it. But you know, you don't have to worry about lecture four too much either. Lecture five, partially covered in assignment number two. Um, so that was all about, um, actually, the e e e the Irish policies, EU RISM directive and travel trends kind of cover that in lecture lecture one. Um, so anything to do with trends is, is important so that we understand uh, where, where we're kind of going and, and what the baseline of what we're trying to deal with is in road safety, uh, cycling safety, exposure. The National Cycling Manual won't be, I, I, you will not be examined of that, of course. Um, and Transport for London Tools guidelines, you won't be examined of that. Again, uh, not, not part of what you will be examined. Cycling safety, some of the stuff that's in there may be about trends and where we are would be important. And knowing about exposure, i.e. we know very little about exposure here in Ireland at the moment. So it's very difficult um, there's a dearth of information around data concerning cycling safety and particularly under reporting um, in Ireland. Um, so that would be important. But all of the other stuff, um, you know, the, you know, the, the kind of um, uh, standard sort of stuff, not 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 too standards and guidelines and things like that. I'm not going to examine you on those don't need to know about those for this exam. Lecture six, um, cycling safety evidence. Um, I think that's probably important to support maybe some questions that might come up or to support opinions that you have. Um, part two, we covered DEMERS, quality audits, walkability and other tools available. Again, assignment two, you'll be assessed on that. So not going to be looking at, at those kind of things about quality audits and walkability audits. So guidance, not going to ask you to um, discuss back. But again, all of this is relevant and maybe you can help but to make it in your discussions or points or things like that more generally, but you I won't be asking you any questions like describe the quality audit or what's a walkability audit. Um, not, not in this exam. This is an important topic. So this is lecture seven. 
So this was on safe systems. So this is one of the most important changes in road safety um, coming in Ireland. So it's a huge challenge. So that is an important examination topic. Um, so we covered quite a lot in that everything from where it came from, what it is, um, its application in Ireland and the EU, um, traditional versus what a traditional road safety approach would be, what the safe systems approach is, the principles, there are three, and the pillars, anything from kind of four to five pillars, depending on, uh, you know, Ireland, you know, safe road users, safe safe roads, safe road, safe speeds, safe users. You know, we have about six or seven of them. Most countries just lump it all into four or five. The challenges with implementing safe systems here and elsewhere and what's in the road safety strategy as well. There's um, just to maybe read what's in the road safety strategy about the safe systems approach. So that topic, that's definitely going to be um, uh, an examinable uh, question on the, on the, in the exam. Um, lecture eight, again, important topics, traffic calming uh, in relation to urban areas. Um, self-explaining roads and things like that. Very important concept for road safety in urban areas and speed and 30 kph concept. So why, where's that coming from? Why is it important? Um, all very important topics uh, going forward in Ireland with achieving road safety targets. So that lecture eight is important. Uh, lecture nine, um, we did um, Simon feedback and um, and we did um, designing for mobility and visually impaired persons. So designing for mobility and, uh, and visually impaired persons, that's really covered in your Deemers um, assignment too. So again, that's mostly covered. I have a read through it, but um, as, a, as, a, as a main topic, we've kind of covered that in the, in the continuous assessment. So again, we'll be examining you on that. And lecture 10. Uh, so, this is some of this contains some important topics and um, because it has to do with Article 5, the RISM Directive and the implementation of network wide safety uh, analysis. So that is an important topic because that's going to become mandatory for national roads. It's something that is going to bleed into regional and local roads and generate a lot of work in, in coming years. So the concepts in that um, Article 5 and challenges around that. That, that's important topic as well. So, um, anybody got any questions so far about that? Just in terms of what you don't need to cover, um, is that kind of clear to you? Or do you have any questions? Would I be right in saying, Suzanne, that there's not really any kind of questions as in calculate or you know, more not. to do with kind of, yeah, it's no, more based not. on information based? Yeah, it's, it's perfect. It's, yeah, it's it's what we've discussed there. Like, it's, um, in your opinion, explain, discuss. It's it's more the kind of uh, kind of theory behind and the policies, the theory pol policies, new paradigms, methodologies. That's what we're looking at. Trends and then challenges with implementation, challenges with data, um, and things like that. And they all affect how we actually do our job. Um, as road safety auditors and engineers. Okay, okay thank you very yeah. much. So no calculations, you will not need a calculator. Absolutely not. Um, nothing like that in this exam. That's all tested in your project work. Um, it's not going to be in this exam. Um, now I'll go back to this, okay. So sample from question one. So, um, you can see from the sample papers that they, they follow a certain pattern. So it won't deviate too much from, from that from the past years, but it would be describe how each of the following methods are, um, are useful tools when conducting a collision investigation. So you'd need to describe kind of what a Haddon matrix is. Uh, you need to describe what regression to the mean is. You need to describe what a conflict study is. You need to describe those. Okay, so for each one of those, um, the Haddon matrix, a regression to the mean, conflict study, not so much, you know, a, like a little, a little, you know, illustration would be helpful, um, perhaps in your 
to show what it is um, because it lends itself easily to that and you have examples um, in the lecture notes about that and in the reading. Um, and how are they useful, you know, in conducting a collision investigation? So a Haddon matrix, that one, how would that help you help you if you were if you had to sit down and do a collision investigation and similarly regression to the mean and similarly for conflict studies. Then you might be asked to give the advantages, disadvantages and limitations of any one of those. OK, so, you know, the advantages and disadvantages of any of those we've kind of covered. Um, so had matrix advantage would be that it looks at it doesn't just look at the crash, it looks it looks at all of the different aspects in a system. Um, of, of what happens. So it doesn't just assume that it is road engineering, it looks at the social, it looks at the, um, it looks at training, it looks at the pre-crash situation, the crash situation and the post-crash situation to identify where the weakness is or identify many weaknesses. So you as a road authority or someone giving advice may say that, look, there are no road engineering interventions here that's all being all the risks associated with that have actually been treated and perhaps there's nothing to do nothing you can do um but enforcement is your only uh, pro, uh only place that you can Im improve this particular issue or area that you're looking at or it could be something like maybe seat belt wearing or it could be something like drink driving or drug use or something like that so something to do in the post or it could be something uh, to do with perhaps um, it's not the road itself, perhaps it's the emergency services and they don't have a proper protocol in place and are losing time getting people to a particular remote road or something like that. So that would be the way to discuss that. Limitations, Haddington Matrix does have its limit limitations. Um, for example, it doesn't, it, you, you can't see the data in it. Um, it doesn't, it doesn't help you look at um, the actual causation of a crash, the mechanism of a crash happening. So if you were wanted to do kind of a causation investigation, it wouldn't really help you do that. It's a lot more kind of high level rather than um, site specific. And again, do the same for regression to the mean conflict studies advantages. Um, when you don't have data, it can serve as a proxy. Really, really good when you don't have recent collision data or you don't have collision data just at a particular point, you go out and do a um, conflict study. Um, disadvantage would be that it's only at that point in time. Uh, you don't get a trend over a full year, maybe unless you went out and did it several several times. Um, and also you'd be doing it at, at a time you wouldn't, you know, so if it wasn't typical, like it was raining or something like that, they might be the limitations. Uh, those, so that's the way you would approach question one. Or a question like that, and this is another one. Um, so this. Sorry, one, that, uh, if you don't mind, um, just to, to go back to, uh, or, or even just a kind of lecture overview you were going on. Did you mention that lecture two wasn't as important, or, or you know, it, it was mostly assignment base? Um, yeah. Or, uh, but then the first two questions there. Sample oh, are, sorry. Yeah, are very no, yeah, heavy on uh, on question or lecture two by by the looks of it. Um, oh yeah, no, we covered regression to the mean. Regression to the mean. I think in lecture two, when I was discussing earlier, I said, "Was it regression to the mean?" Sorry, sorry, that should be lecture three. Lecture three. I'll change that. Okay. So I had regression to the mean in here. So that's we covered that actually in lecture three. Usually I covered in lecture two, but we actually covered in lecture three um, on this occasion. So that one, they're probably in lecture three. So I just changed those. OK, so they're actually lecture three. Th those two things. I can't remember. I just had into matrix. I think I might have covered in lecture two, but definitely regression to the mean is is lecture three. OK, but they other other than those, there 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 isn't too much in there. Those specific things. Okay. Okay. Yeah, thanks. Right. So this this one here is a sample question if you were asked to apply the Haddon matrix. So it gives you an example and then it asks you to actually draw it out. And using the Haddon matrix 
um, methodology and identify the pre-crash, crash and post-crash uh, risk factors related. So you, you would have to kind of um, sort of populate that yourself from your own, you know, imagination, I guess. Um, but it would be um, an example. That one there is that's another potential question um, of, of how you could get asked to do the Haddington matrix. And um, we covered that. Um, and then lecture 10, we covered, um, we covered, um, that was your, on your read list on lecture 10 for um, the conflict, conflict zones. Now I have this up here, the Swedish traffic conflict technique. Now I didn't cover that in lectures, but if you were ever interested in conflict zones, conflict um, studies, this version of it gives a much, much more in-depth um, methodology than the one, the classic one that's in the, a guide to road safety engineering in Ireland. Um, so the, a guide to road safety engineering in Ireland covers the general format of it. Uh, the Swedish format gives you an urban rural, so it gives you some more information about if you were doing a conflict study um, and what to watch out for, what's near misses and close misses for cyclists and walkers, what that means. So I put that in there for information, but it's not it's not on the exam because we didn't cover it, but it's there for information if you were ever doing one. But conflict studies are covered in a guide to road safety engineering. Lecture 10, there's a link to it, and it was also on your, your you were supposed to read that. So that's quite important to know that one. Um, question two. So most of this was covered lecture one, lecture five, and lecture six. Uh, so this one is discuss a collision trend that you have observed in Ireland today. So the way you would approach that is like, we've discussed a good number of trends in Ireland um, today. Like, so one of the most notable ones is the disparity between um, protected, uh, protected road users and unprotected road users or motorized traffic and non-motorized traffic. Um, so um, Sweden, uh, VTI in Sweden would describe that as cyclists, for example, are the biggest challenge to achieving vision zero um, in, in Sweden at the moment. That's their biggest challenge. And that would be echoed. So cyclist safety and pedestrian safety in Ireland is our biggest challenge. That That's the biggest one that we face at the moment. If we don't get our heads around that one, we're not, we're not going to achieve um, half reduction in serious injuries by 2030. And we're certainly not going to achieve um, zero collisions by 2050, even though that's really, really difficult to do that. Um, so, you know, there are other trends in there, so you're not limited to that, but that is the headline one. Um, so that's an important one to know. Um, and it, again, the question would go something like, in your opinion, comment on the road safety challenges, and please state at least two challenges um, that this trend presents for road safety professionals. Okay, so some of the challenges that we have, if we were to discuss vulnerable road users in Ireland would be a lack of data. And uh, the other one would be under reporting. Um, so under reporting in Ireland is about tenfold. Okay, so only about one in 10. So we get the ones that are reported to Angarda Shikona or the ones that Angarda Shikona attend, but in the main, um, it's, you know, either they bring themselves to hospital or they, um, or an ambulance comes and they aren't reported. So, you know, there's lots of uh, people get knocked down, the car dries off, or they, it's a very close pass. They have a wobble, cars none the wiser, and it's not their fault. They just don't realise it. person can get like seriously injured. There's all of the collisions that happen because of poor infrastructure, people have a wobble, um, shared spaces are a nightmare, cyclists taking avoiding manoeuvres around pedestrians result in either pedestrian cyclists or cyclist cyclists or cyclist only collisions. Anyway, the list goes on and, and that's one of our biggest challenges um, in, in Ireland at the moment. So another part of that would be discuss the impact of misreporting or underreporting or exposure data on that trend whichever one that you that you want to talk about and comment on the impact that they have on the selection of road safety measures. So that's the important part for you guys, because how does that affect you 
in your job as a road safety auditor and engineer. So, you know, you're you're going to be working on a lot of these that you're really working in the blind. Um, so other than your professional ability to A, know that there's quite a bad trend going on at the moment, that you know that with all of the investment in active travel, all of the policies for climate um, and the push for active travel to, to really kick off in this country, that we have a certain trend at the moment, that trend um, has a certain trajectory in terms of road safety, which is a worsening trend, not an improving trend. Um, and we do know that we're operating in a bit of a vacuum. We do know that it's under reporting one in 10. So when we're looking at reactive measures, um, we only see a 10th of the actual collision problems. So that's, that's a real problem. That's a real problem for us. So we have to use that knowledge to kind of fill in the gaps. That's, that's where we come in. Um, so that the evidence isn't all there. And it's the same with exposure. Um, we're really struggling in a in a vacuum because we don't have we don't have traffic models. There are ones coming, but um, in the main, we do not know. You know, if there's 50 people a day, 500 people a day. So if we have you know two collisions, two serious injuries in three years, is that really really bad or just you know safe enough? So it's difficult. So we need to arm ourselves with as much information about what's going on there with evidence on road safety for. Um, vulnerable road users so that is we covered over we covered kind of main trends that are going on in road safety in Ireland in lecture one and then we kind of looked at specifics um, in lecture five and lecture six um, etc um, oh yeah so I think we had I don't know if it's lecture 86 but it was definitely at the end of lecture one there was some self-directed learning so to explore publications, websites and data sources that were suggested to you, um, maybe any others that you might know or find useful. And it also asks you to look at Ireland at the national level and can you identify three areas of road safety improvements that would be that would be that we should be looking at. Um, and also to look at road users between 2013 and 2020 in Ireland. Um, so that you will have found those trends in the road safety collision facts from the Road Safety Authority. So that was some of the self-directed learning that you would have done early and earlier in the course. So that should that should help frame if you get a question like that, you should be able to answer that. So that's pretty much as I said before, like one of the big trends is vulnerable road users um, tackling that. Um, another question might be, this is safe systems. So, um, this is one, as I said, this is lecture seven. Um, and there's a little bit of uh, some other little relevant bits in lecture 10, mostly um, the difference between proactive and reactive uh, collision or uh, road safety methodologies. Um, so you, you need to know what is the safe systems approach. OK, where did it come from? What is it about? Um, and how do countries or agencies who fully embrace that new paradigm? Like, where, who are they? Um, when did it start? And what's it all about? Um, then it would be possibly you get a question on discuss the principles of the pr approach. OK, so there's two different things. There are the principles of safe systems and then there's the, pr the pillars of um, safe systems approach. So the principles are I think I have them on the following slide down here. So principles are, and they're written in various different ways, but mostly like this. So the principles are people make mistakes. So you cannot remove that out of road safety engineering. It's just going to happen. It's going to be a small mistake. Um, it's going to be an error. It's going to be a violation. But people, by their nature, will act and they will make mistakes. That is sure. We do know that. The second principle is that the human body has limitations to force. OK, there's only so much force it can take before it's injured. OK, so we don't want serious or fatal injuries to happen in our system. So at best, we can tolerate minor or slight injuries. So a cut, um, an abrasion, a bruise, something like that. We, we can walk away from that, literally. That's acceptable. The body can take those limits of force, but any more force than that will result in serious or killed injuries. And that is within our design and safe systems. 
we can, we're recognizing that the human body can't tolerate that. And also with the shared responsibility. So it is not just road safety engineers. It is not just local authorities. It is everyone. It is all actors and stakeholders within the transport system who have responsibility for delivering safe systems. And then there's five pillars. So this one is one example of the five pillars. So you look in the road safety strategy and they actually have more than that. I think they have six. Um, so some countries just just leave it to four and that's fine whatever you want to go with so there is safe road use there's safe vehicles safe speed safe roads and roadsides and post-crash response okay so a lot of a lot of the systems leave out post-crash response so don't worry about that one but the main ones are safe road use safe vehicles safe speeds safe roads safe users so safe road use is safe users so those four are the key pillars of safe systems um, yeah, so discuss the principles of the approach you need to know about that and then why in your opinion would adopting so this is your opinion bit why would adopting safe systems approach be transformative or maybe you disagree with that entirely you don't think it would be and traditional is best compared to the prevailing traditional approach okay so why is this system so different um, than a traditional system um, so there's some, we, we went through the challenges as well. I have a few slides on that coming. So again, Sweden and the Netherlands, that's in lecture seven. Um, and there's information about who, where it came from, um, what, what it's all about. So just look in lecture seven for that. Principles, again, they're covered in lecture seven. Challenges. Okay, so how to address that high political ambition for better road safety results and balanced costs. So how do we do that? That's a challenge. How to work together. That's a huge challenge. So that's really the same for every single country. But like, you know how we operate in Ireland. We have many, many agencies um, and we work even within agencies in quite a siloed way. Um, so that does not lend itself well to safe systems. Um, we all need to work in a very, very integrated way. So that's really difficult institutionally in Ireland and professionally. We're not used to working like that. Um, um, yeah, so new professional purposes and new collaboration in order to, and that, that's new challenges that we need to meet as well. It will mean that safe systems will mean that traditional metrics need to change. So, and that is changing. So the traditional metric in Ireland was the number of fatalities. That's no longer the case. We're moving into safe systems and you can see from the road safety strategy, that we've got a lot of new targets. We've got targets for fatal and we've got targets for uh, serious injury. And we have a list of 10 or 11 uh, safety performance indicators. So we never had those before. And we also um, have a phased approach. So we don't let it go for 10 years. We look at it and review after three to four years. So that's a big, big change. Um, also, persons responsible are named, time limits are named. So that's all changed. Um, and again, we, we covered all of these in, in the lectures. So we've got the other challenge of aging population. So that means we're more, even more vulnerable uh, to the impact force of collisions um, and also changing, um, uh, changing vehicles as well. So we've got e-mobility coming on. We have um, autonomous and connected vehicles unknown how they're going to operate um, within um, within the current transport system. So we've, we've got lots of challenges um, ahead within safe systems. Um, question four, another one, and this is to do with urban and to do with um, deemers, but it's more about the concept within that. So principles within that, not going to be asking you about deemers, um, but discuss self-explaining roads. That would be an important one for us as road safety engineers to understand why they're important, how to achieve them um, and the challenges with them. So uh, what's their origin and why are they important for the road safety concept? Um, please include best case examples in your answer. So are there any good examples of self-explaining roads? Uh, Dean Roots would have some of those and we chatted about some of that in class. Um, and then reference this, ignore that one because that one was for the previous. So reference the sections on any guidance documents, ignore that. That was for the open book exam. So forget about that. Um, give your opinion 
and what the prevailing challenges that would hinder the successful application of self-explaining roads. So we discussed that in class again, you know, the cost of it. So a lot of the times if you were to achieve self-explaining roads, you might be going from um, kind of blacktop with lining um, and quite small, you know, narrow footpaths and no places for people. And it's it just just doesn't it just looks like a road. It doesn't really look like a place. Um, But in order to make it look like a place, a place um, and driver to react as such, it, it costs a lot. And also things like removing Uh, parking are going to be an issue so one of the challenges for road safety engineers would be you may well know you need a self-explaining road you might actually have the budget um, and there's a lot of money out there at the moment um, but you might get it through planning so local uh, so local stakeholder consultation is a big part of this and uh, local political um, acceptance of it and coming along with it so that's definitely a challenge that we have because we, the majority of ones in urban areas that require removal, not of all parking, but of a lot of a park of a lot of parking, um, narrowing down roads to what it says in Deemers, um, and putting in things like speed tables, um, and designing junctions to safe systems, putting in traffic lights, um, giving priority to pedestrians and cyclists at junctions, at entrances. It's just um, people are are absolutely objecting to it. So we know what would work road in, in terms of say, oh, road safety, but there are externalities to that that are creating a challenge to implement it. So that that would be one way to discuss that, and we we um, we covered that in in our lectures. Um, yeah, so that's just one of the bit, one of the things that was in our one of the lectures. So road designs and operations, and operations that provide feedback to users or are self-explaining, self-explaining can help create an environment that promotes safe road use and appropriate speeds. So appropriate speeds are also important to cover, and the thirty kph are really important to cover. So this is just an illustration. Just to recap, we had in in our um, in our lectures, not expecting you to reproduce anything like this at all to help illustrate you're not expected to do that and um, so please don't think by my inclusion that that is what it means and um, it's just recap and uh, to rejig the memory so we did go through loads of challenges and i've just discussed one such two challenges to that which is getting through the planning system um, and lots of other challenges as well so self-explaining roads there's uh, lots of challenges yeah so concerns about loss of parking that's a huge that is a huge one um under reporting this comes in again, so under-reporting of maybe pedestrians and cyclists, so you just don't have the cold hard data to put in front of maybe councillors to say, look, this is what's happening. Um, so that not collecting that missing data, that blind that blind spot that we have, but actually we know what is happening in the background, um, not having that, that's also a challenge to maybe um, providing an economic just justification that can be problematic. So ways to get around that. Um, So I'm coming nearly to the end of this now. So another potential question would be on the EU RISM Directive, um, placing new emphasis on vulnerable road safeties across member states uh, due to increasingly evident disparity between motorised and non-motorised users. And we covered that already. Um, So this one would kind of a typical question with regard to Irish context, please discuss the challenges facing road safety engineers and auditors when designing or ensuring equitable safety for non-motorised users. So, I mean, you can draw on nearly everything that we discussed on this evening and covered this evening to answer a question like that. Um, Under-reporting, challenges with planning, challenges with implementing self-explaining roads and deemers, anything like that. So, really, um, that's really kind of a practical answer. Um, If you could even, if you've even done one of those before, how difficult that is, and uh, to get, um, they're much, much more costly than anything you would do in a rural high-speed situation. Um, another part of a possible question would be discuss the impl- implementation of network-wide road safety assessment in Ireland in the context of Article Five of the Risen Directive. So we covered that in Lecture Ten. Okay, so um, just how is that implemented in Ireland, and it's the proactive, reactive. Um, and how how that is, and a little bit about Article Five, and that that really is it in in a nutshell. 
So hopefully that has reduced down what you thought you had to cover. So if you have any questions, just we, we have like 10 minutes left. So if you've got questions you want to ask, just shout, just throw on the, um, put on the, the uh, cameras and I'll stop sharing and you can just ask. So is that um, is that clear to people what you need to cover, um, and does it does that take out a lot of a lot of what you thought you had to cover? Yeah, thanks, Suzanne. Yeah, yeah, thanks, Suzanne. It's helpful. Yeah, yeah, so it's very helpful. Yeah. yeah. So if you if you you if you go through the past exam papers and go through um, what I've covered in sample questions, there, um, you you know you won't get any surprises, you know. Um, in the paper, so it should be it should be fairly fairly okay. Um, so just to mention, it is it is a written exam. Um, so if so, if you have written in a long time, um, just uh, practice a little bit. Do, do we do we bring our own paper, Suzanne? Uh, what paper no. for proctors? No, no. Oh, for proctoring. That's a good question. You, 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 are you, you're doing you're doing a proctor. You're going for the proctor phalem, are you? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Ask the um, ask uh, and is that lined up with the university as well? Yeah. Okay. It's all yeah booked in and all that kind of stuff. In, um, yeah. Usually, they you will get the, an exam pack will be sent to the proctor, um, so that should include um, should include you know exam paper. Um, you know the way that you can write your your student number on, on the top or whatever, and it closes. I don't know if they use the clo the one where you can have a sticky thing and close it and seal it. I don't know if they they do that um, here in. Thing. But no, you should be provided with paper. But um, have you been in contact with the proctoring company? Yeah, I'm just setting it up now at the moment. But I'm just looking ahead. Is is what what do we actually write on? Um, yeah, well, will you, they, they you should have it. They should they should be. And is it remote? It's just they'll be there'll be a physical person there with you, and you just sit in the room, and they'll proctor it. That's what you're doing. I think it's remote. It's remote. Sorry. Yeah. I think it's remote. I think it's yeah, it's all done remotely. But and I think Rowan said in the last lecture that you might have to print your um the exam paper. Oh. Yeah, we had a chat about that. No, everybody's writing. Mm. Um. So uh, what you do need is you you will have to upload, um, you will have to upload it. So find out from the proctors if they have a system they want you to use. Okay, so I don't. That's a private company. I don't know about them. Or um, find out if you have to do that yourself. So make sure you. And uh, actually, Rowan was saying that a lot of the phones have a scanning app. You can get a scanning app. That will automatically like scan it as a picture and convert it, and uh, so act like a scanner. But as I said, the cameras or the photo phones are so good now, um. So you might have to discuss that with the the proctoring company that you're dealing with, or the person doing the proctoring, um. So you know that you agree you're going to get your phone or whatever it is, whatever device it is, and, and do it after the exam. And you'll have twenty minutes to do that. So please, if you are doing it with the proctored. Make sure you have that you are sure how you're going to upload it. Are they going to take the physical paper and post it back for you, which I suspect is what they're supposed to do? Or if it's remote, remote, then you have to find out some way that you need to take the photograph of it or scan it and find that find out. So I don't know what arrangement the proctoring company will have. So you need to have to communicate that with them and, and be sure what you're doing. And if if you are responsible for scanning it yourself, try it out you so you'll have 20 minutes so you have loads of time okay um so don't be worrying about that you will absolutely have loads of time plus three hours is a lot longer than than you need so you'll be comfortable you'll have enough time even left over so the the 20 minutes then you you will be fine but do do practice do a trial run do a dry run of uploading and make sure the systems work but if something goes wrong don't panic um you can contact um, there'll be either myself, Brian, or uh, Rowan to contact on the day, so you, you'll be fine. Okay, if you do run into 
major difficulties, you, you'll be okay. Is that okay? But do, I can't answer, I can't tell you what the arrangements are for the proctors companies themselves, but just make sure you have that known and you ask the questions and even ask them, can you do a dry run and see, will they accommodate you to do that? But they, they should provide the paper. There's a, there's a sample exam within it, um, just to give you an idea of how to do it. Okay, good. Okay, i try that out then. So that's good. So you have you used that before, Alana, or you're 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 just getting into it? Um, no, I'm wafting through the uh, technical instructions. Issues. <laughs> yeah, and the technical yeah. issues with like incognito mode and things like that. But, uh... Okay, okay, yeah. So anybody doing that, please just save yourself the stress and and be confident. You know what you're supposed to do, what you're allowed to do, and what it looks like. So you're not getting, you'll have a, you know, you, you just want to remove as much stress from yourself on the morning of the exam as possible. So you're not worried about um, what do I have to do? And if it was me, my head would explode. Um, so just just try and remove as much stress as you can from yourselves by, by doing a dry run and talking to those proctoring. Um, so Alana, is that remote? Yeah. Proctoring? Yeah. It's remote, all... remote. There's no one with you. It's yeah. just, they have some they have some system where someone's watching you or something yeah is that what it is it's it, Grant. yeah it's watching you and you must put up your photo id and do all this sort of stuff. <laughs> okay okay lovely yeah. um so then that sounds to me like you might well have to have a conversation about the paper um so it's it's not until the 14th so i'm going to i'm just going to ask brian mccann about that about paper scripts I don't think anything gets sent out Suzanne I think it's completely if you're doing the complete remote is, one I think it's just all on your own bat and you have is to it? yeah I think so okay well just check 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 okay Grant well then in that case you probably will have to provide your own then unfortunately you won't get the scripts but um, I'm just going to ask Brian McCann if we can if they will post out um, scripts to you paper I don't know if the exams office do that but that said, just be, be make sure you've got as much A4 fools cap as as you think you'll need, um, and everything on the morning. Because if you're, you won't even, you know, um, lots of pens. Because it sounds like there won't be there won't be someone there to kind of like, uh, there won't be invigilators there to help you. Uh, you will be on your own. Um, okay. Um, any other questions from anybody? Just on the exam topics. Okay, right. So I'm just going to email Brian McCann about that that date again, date changing. Um, and Gordon, does that answer your questions then that you had? We kind of covered those again about the paper. If it's fully, um, it, are you? It sounds like you're going to be using the same thing as Alana. Well, no, I'm going to try to arrange to go to Athlone. Athlone, okay. Yeah. Although technically, I'm still missed the the deadline for making that choice so i'll have to get on to the examinations office then okay well i'm just going to email um i'm just going to email uh, brian on that this evening as well okay all right thanks. that's choosing the date the time the, okay the and is, then, another if they're changing that so often it's it will be very hard to book accommodation i, I need to travel well, that's what that yeah no that's that that was my thought uh branco i i really raised an eyebrow at that now i was um like once was i i thought once to change it was enough really to be honest with you to to flip from the the monday then to the saturday um, so that's why I'm kind of I'm a little bit surprised, or I'm no, not. A ori bit. Or originally, they they were saying that that was uh, the original date was outside of the uh, exam uh, period, but I think they mentioned that the exam period is from four to seventeen. That that means they changed without reason because it was still in the valid period. I don't know, the, you know. Yeah, I yeah I don't know how to make those decisions, Branko, and it seems to be very. Um, uh, quick fire, um, but I'm gonna I'm gonna just I'm just gonna email Brian about that, um, and and especially about accommodation. So like I'd assume most of you have accommodation if you needed it booked already. Like so, 
um, if it's if it's at a different time, then that's a problem. Okay. Um, all right. So does that that should cover what you need for like my section? So there's you know there's all of the four questions are nice questions. Uh, they're all things that we've covered a lot. Um, so hopefully you enjoyed them. Um, and um, good luck with everything. Um, and I'll get Brian to email just to confirm about about that exam date, uh, exam time, and then I, uh, about Athlone as well. Okay. So if there's no other questions, uh, thank you very much. And I hope you the best, wish you the best of luck with it. And I hope you do great. Thanks, thanks, Suzanne. Thank, thank you. you. Okay. Thanks, Take care, everybody. Bye. Thank you very much, Suzanne. Bye. 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 Bye.